Hello everyone, my name is Nikolai Nikolov and today I'm presenting my white paper on the originally published paper A Fully Progressive Approach to Single Image Super Resolution. This work is part of the Hot Topics in Computer Vision seminar. We're starting off by the contents of this presentation. We're going to talk about the introduction, the method methodology, and the related work, and then we're going to end with some experiments, results, and the conclusion and future work. Starting off with the introduction, we're going to introduce the single image super resolution field. The field of single image super resolution, or more generally super resolution, has been the center of increased interest and research in the last two decades. Its aim is to recover or generate lost details by taking in a low resolution image, in this case this input shown on the presentation, and outputting a high resolution one. Um, there are two subfields in super resolution differing in the number of source images uh, used in the recovery process. The first one, uh, multi-image super resolution, uses uh, multiple images and they're often taken from a slightly different angle and a slightly different time. So in this case, for example, we can have multiple cameras pointing at the same subject, uh, taking multiple images, and then we can produce a high um, resolution image uh, from the low resolution multiple ones. This, however, uh, may not be useful or may not be permitted all the time. Uh, for example, taking multiple exposures might not be possible or having access to multiple images of the same scene might, also, might not be possible. So that's when we use single image super resolution where we have a single input, a low resolution image and then we get to a high resolution um, alternative. This problem, of course, is difficult as there is less information and in order to show the relationship between a low resolution image and a high resolution image, we can simplify this relationship by uh, the following formula. Uh, basically, the high resolution image is modified by a degradation function, and that's how we obtain the low resolution image. And this degradation might be because of a smaller spatial resolution, for example, a smaller sensor, uh, because of blurring, uh, maybe the camera is moving or because of compression uh, if we want a lower image size. And while generating a low resolution image uh, from a high resolution one is trivial and highly customizable due to the virtually endless degradation functions, getting a high resolution image from a low resolution image is more difficult. This is because finding the inverse of an unknown degradation function is a new pose problem. Initially, um, to find solutions to this single image super resolution problems, um, developers started using interpolations. Uh, simple interpolations such as the nearest neighbor upsampling uh, used information from surrounding pixels to generate new ones. And this resu um, resulted in pixelated images which had a higher uh, resolution uh, but still didn't look um, much better than the original image. Other interpolations um, are uh, bilinear interpolation and bicubic interpolation. Um, as you can see, these interpolations often result in blurry or pixelated images, uh, and this is because they are only using the surrounded pixels contained in the original image as sources of information. This is why um, Deep learning has uh, been used in the last couple of decades and um, these approaches yield better results because deep neural networks remember previously seen images from the training process and use this additional information to produce a high resolution image. And there are multiple approaches to uh, using deep learning for single image super resolution. Uh, the first one is direct reconstruction. And in direct reconstruction techniques, uh, images are upsampled uh, from the low resolution image to the high resolution image in a single step. Uh, and this methodology has a couple of limitations. Two of them are uh, higher computational complexity because the uh, reconstruction is done in a single step. 
uh, and also uh, reconstructing it in single step means we have a longer reconstruction time. So it takes more time to go from the low resolution image to the high resolution one. Whereas progressive reconstruction, the second approach, uh, we have uh, multiple steps getting from a low resolution image to a mid-sized resolution image to then a high resolution image. And in this white paper, we're gonna look at the second approach and specifically a paper called uh, a fully progressive approach to single image super resolution. And in this section, we're gonna introduce the methodology uh, behind this method. Um, we're gonna start off by introducing the method. Uh, it's proposed by Wang, uh, and it is progressive both in architecture and training. Uh, and it upscales images in multiple steps. And in order to introduce the method, we're gonna first talk about the architecture, which is often called progressive or pyramidal architecture shown in this image. Um, it's important to see that we have a objective, objective function u, uh, which is decomposed in a sequence of less complex functions, uh, u0, u1, and u2. And these are shown here on the presentation. Um, all of these upsample images uh, by uh, an upsampling factor of two, uh, and they consist of a cascade of dense compression units, which are the orange blocks, and uh, subpixel convolution layers, which are the purple blocks. Uh, we also have, um, addi additionally to the uh, U levels, we also have VS and RS, which are the uh, scale-specific subnetworks, um, the uh, scale specific subnetworks are shown here, and then the R subnetworks are shown here. They're scale specific uh, to the specific upsampling scale. To improve the learning process, um, uh, we, um, instead of learning the whole uh, reconstruction, we only learn the residual between the um, residual of the difference between the expected image and the naively upscaled image. Uh, for example, using by cubic interpolation. And so the residual is computed in this way. This is uh, using all network, all subnetworks, scale specific and uh, more general. And at the end, we, we have a output uh, of the whole network uh, shown by this function where we have the residual learned by the network plus the naively upsampled input uh, shown by phi here. Additionally to the progressive architecture, uh, ProSR, um, the progressive um, super resolution uses curriculum learning. Um, the training is done according to curriculum learning, which aims to increase the training performance by slowly raising the difficulty of the learning task. Um, first, the 2x uh, of something by 2 section of the pyramidal architecture is trained, and then subsequent portions, 4x and 8x, are attached to the network. Um, this ensures that the training difficulty is gradually increased and compared to simple multi-scale training, the total time, uh, total training time greatly decreases and the performance increases. There's also a GAN enhanced ProSR model, but this white paper uh, will not um, talk about it. We also have a related work section, and here we're going to touch on a, a similar uh, in performance, but uh, different in architecture approach. Um, so let's get into it. Um, one of the methods uh, that is yielding high uh, peak signal to noise ratio, PSNR, and structural similarity index, SSIM, results um, close to ProSR is EDSR. Um, similarly to ProSR, whose pyramidal levels are based on the dense net architecture, EDSR's residual networks utilize skip connections. Um, both the dense connections in ProSR and the skip connections in EDSR are partially responsible for the better results they produce compared to other methods, as the, these connections improve gradient flow uh, by alleviating vanishing and shattered gradients. And this is why they also yield similar results. Now compared to ProSR, EDSR consists of roughly three times more parameters than ProSR um, to or get the same results. And 
this it requires more total training time to find the correct uh, values of these parameters. Now getting to the experiments section of this presentation, we're going to evaluate ProSR on different categories of images. For this experiment, the implementation that we're going to use is from uh, Ferrati. Uh, the GitHub repository is uh, from the user of Ferrati and the name of the repository is ProSR. The language in which the implementation is written is Python and the model that we're going to use for this evaluation is ProSR, which is pre-trained. We, we don't do any uh, training on this white paper. The metrics that we're going to use uh, to uh, do our evaluation are uh, peak to signal um, noise ratio and uh, peak signal to noise ratio and structural similarity index. The extensions that we've done to uh, the GitHub repository that we previously mentioned are a couple of tools for setting up, scaling, and processing data from multiple datasets to improve and uh, make the evaluation quicker. And um, we have also defined seven datasets for different categories of images. Uh, for each category, we have randomly selected three images. Um, and the size of these images you show here, basically a thousand pixels in uh, width and a thousand pixels in height. And these images were randomly selected from Unsplash's API. The evaluation datasets that uh, we have created and uh, that we just discussed are shown in this in graphic. We have an astronomy uh, dataset which contains photos of astronomical objects. We have nature as uh, containing photos of plants, animals, and other natural scenes. We also have uh, a dataset specifically for animals, basically showing photos of the animal kingdom. We have faces uh, containing uh, photographs of human faces, art, uh, photos of the visual arts, paintings, drawings, uh, and other similar uh, photos. We have interior datasets consisting of photos of building interiors and the last data set is of urban areas uh, basically containing images of uh, the city's landscape. Um, to test um, ProSR uh, we have three upscaling factors 2x, 4x and 8x and we have these seven different categories of images and the results are shown in this table. Um, it's important to note uh, first that uh, ProSR yields the best results uh, for images containing human faces. The faces dataset yields the best results for 4x and 8x upsampling, uh, and it shares the first place with the inferior dataset for 2x upsampling. Um, also, uh, another insight from this data is that the interior dataset suffers from the largest loss in PSNR from 2x to 4x, um, almost 5 um, points, uh, which might be caused by the homogeneously colored sections in the interior images, uh, such as walls, for example. While for 2x of something, um, these details are easily recovered. In 4x and 8x, the details from other parts of the image, such as furniture, art, and others, are more difficult to recover in, and resulting in a loss of PSNR and SSI M. Um, for the other datasets, it's interesting to know that the art, animals, and astronomy datasets yield similar results. Um, this might be explained by the similarity of animals to humans. Additionally, art offer often involves portraying animals, humans, and interiors, so ProSR also performs well on the art dataset. Uh, the results on the astronomy dataset might be explained by the large homogeneously colored areas or for example space, um, planet surfaces and others um, similarly colored areas uh, and these are easier to, re uh, to reproduce to upscale. ProSR produces the worst results on the urban dataset. Um, this might be explained by complicated architecture and more complex lighting, such as reflections from windows, um, which are common in uh, the urban area. 
Furthermore, architecture and design vary greatly across cultures and often contain many edges, which are more difficult to recover without the introduction of noise. And lastly, we're going to conclude with a um, short summary and uh, a note on future work. Um, the field of single image super resolution has seen a rapid growth of newly published papers and Wang uh, has developed a deep learning approach utilizing both progressive architecture and training. Um, the experiments in this paper demonstrate that ProSR yields good results in most categories of images and very good results on uh, those containing human faces. Future work that might be done and might yield some interesting insights is to train multiple versions of ProSR in different categories of images and evaluate each model on the specialized category of images. Um, it might also be interesting to compare the specialized models and their results against the general ProSR and its results. Finally, building a system that executes all specialized models in parallel on an input image and returns the one with the highest PSNR on SSI in might also reveal new insights and possibilities in the field of single image super resolution. The last part of the presentation contains the references and they're listed in the following slides. If you want to uh, see any of them in more detail, please pause and uh, go to their definitions. And that's the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, or you can find my contact details here, as well as on the first slide, uh, my website, my email, and my LinkedIn profile. Thank you.